Clinically, prostate problems may present with bladder outflow obstruction, frequency, urgency, nocturia and occasionally acute urinary retention. These are all examples of lower urinary tract symptoms or LUTs. Normally on digital rectal examination the prostate has a rubbery consistency and is approximately the size of a chestnut. When there is benign enlargement of the prostate due to benign prostatic hyperplasia the prostate is symmetrically enlarged and retains a rubbery consistency. However in more advanced cases of prostate cancer the prostate feels hard and has an irregular outline. Prostate specific antigen or PSA is a substance produced by prostate epithelial cells and it can be detected in the serum. Normally the level is less than 4 micrograms per litre in men below the age of 60. The level does increase with age and conditions such as benign prostatic hyperplasia and prostatitis can cause the level to become high. PSA levels greater than 10 micrograms per litre indicate there is a high chance that there is underlying prostate cancer. Benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH is very common in middle-aged and elderly men. It is caused by proliferation of prostate glands and the fibromuscular stroma in which they lie and it affects the transition zone which is the area of the prostate around the urethra. BPH is caused by the action of 5-alpha reductase on testosterone producing dihydrotestosterone or DHT. This results in proliferation of the epithelial cells smooth muscle and fibrous tissue in the prostate causing the nodular enlargement. BPH can be treated with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. These drugs include finasteride and Dutasteride. The usual form of surgical treatment is transurethral resection of the prostate or TURP. If the prostate is very large and occasionally an open prostatectomy has to be carried out, this procedure is usually the Millins procedure. This is the histological appearance of prostate chips resected from a TURP procedure. Complications of BPH include urinary tract infection and pyelonephritis, stones, bladder diverticuli, hydrourea and hydronephrosis, and in severe cases, renal failure. This is a severely hypertrophied prostate causing enlargement and dilatation of the bladder hydrourea's and hydronephrosis. There are many different types of prostatitis. Acute bacterial prostatitis may follow a urinary tract infection. It can also follow urethral instrumentation and the organisms are usually E. coli and proteus. Prostatitis can also follow sexually transmitted diseases such as gonorrhea and chlamydia. Prostatitis may be chronic and sometimes it may be completely asymptomatic and only known about when it is seen in histological specimens. This is a typical example of an incidental acute prostatitis. The gland on the left contains neutrophil polymorphs. Another subtype of prostatitis is granulomatous prostatitis. This may be idiopathic caused by leakage from distended ducts in BPH. It may follow surgery or BCG treatment for bladder cancer. It may follow a urinary tract infection and sometimes of course 
it can be due to tuberculosis. Clinically, granulomatous prostatitis may mimic cancer because the prostate may feel hard, nodular and fixed, and in addition the PSA level may be markedly raised. The nodular white areas in this prostate is an example of granulomatous prostatitis. This is the histological appearance of granulomatous prostatitis. The duct has been damaged and a foreign body giant cell response has resulted. You can see the foreign body giant cells on the right side of the duct. This results in a granulomatous inflammatory infiltrate. And it is this that causes the prostate to become hard and nodular and mimic cancer. You can also see why the prostate epithelial cells will release their prostate specific antigen causing it to become very raised. In fact this particular patient had a PSA level of 12.3